Kite Chevy Geo. Give us a call. Six fifty-two remaining in Missouri's torment. They take over at their nine-yard line, first and ten. Brandon Corso, still the Tiger quarterback. And some room right up the middle for Raphael Tiger Boyd. He's at the right school, isn't it? <laughs> Texas with a field goal by Scott Sheretti within four. And Florida in a battle of SEC powers in the top ten with a 7-0 lead. Tiger Boyd from Sykeston, Missouri. Redshirt freshman. That was a nice hole up the middle for Boyd to run in. And, of course, once again on Missouri's side, we've been talking about the Aggies' side with the backup players. The Missouri guys also want to do well. This is an opportunity for them to come in and maybe show the coaching staff that they deserve more playing time. Boyd for a loss of one this time. They'll get another crack at the Southwest Conference. And they'll hope for better results when they do. SMU is on their non-conference schedule after they take a trip to West Virginia. Got to play at Colorado, at Nebraska. And as we talked earlier, you, you have to hope if your Bob's told that this isn't the kind of mental plow that hangs over your team all year long. Because their entire self-image has been rearranged by the Aggies here today. Jenkins loses yet more yards. They thought this was their first winning team possibly since 1983. It may still be, but you got to have a, a great capacity to forget bad things to overcome what's happened to them here today. How would you like to be in Bob Stoll Skull session? That's going to be a tough one to reevaluate exactly what happened during the course of this game. And but once again, you come back and you've got to say it's a total breakdown. We were looking for Jeff Handy, the quarterback, to come out and play exceptional football. Well, the offensive line did not give him any time to throw it. Now we've got Corso. That's about the best time they've had to pick off. And the return inside the 20-yard line by Dennis Allen. job by Allen that time as he just waited in center field as the free safety read the eyes of the quarterback Corso was back to throw and watch what happens watch him he's right in the middle of the field right on about the 35 yard line he steps right in front of the football an excellent jump on the ball closed very quickly and gives the Aggies another opportunity Allen sophomore from Hurst Bell Turns it over in, uh, once again, tremendous scoring range for a and That carry by Eddie Wallace as they go deeper yet. I beg your pardon. Well, they got two number 29s here today. They have done it. I didn't know if it was possible, but they have done it. They gave us a, a roster of, it looked like, well over 90 on the, on the sideline today. And we finally got into a duplicate number. That had to happen. That is Eddie Wallace, though, isn't it? Well, I hope so. The rest of them got listed. Eddie Wallace running the ball out of Spring High School. No, that's Harden. Ah. Sorry, uh, Harden family. We just, we have absolutely nothing on your man, number 29. <laughs> but a number and a last name. But it is 66 to nothing. Is that all? It is third and two. 12 yard line up the middle. Shane Anthony, first and goal laying in. Shane Anthony, we do have. Yes, we do. You know, let's get into this suspension thing because RC talked about this yesterday. And uh, this has been a very difficult situation for this football team because Billy Mitchell, Brian Mitchell, Greg Hill, Jesse Cox, and James Brooks have just been kind of sitting there waiting for something to happen. And it wasn't until 
Thursday or Friday afternoon as we... And again, and they crack 70. Harden on the touchdown. <laughs> Gotta be careful. We're gonna get back to this suspension thing in just a few minutes. But once again, the Aggies make it happen again. And so do they. That guy is an Aggie, isn't he? He woke up today and he said, man, I hope they let me suit up. <laughs> just, just let me put on the pants. And three and a half hours later, here he is in the end zone. Look at Hart. What, a, what an effort. Watch this. Going around the right side. He doesn't have the speed of these other running backs, but he will not be denied. Get in the end zone. Aggie fans, capture the excitement and tradition of Texas A&M football in the pages of Aggie Illustrated Magazine. Each issue is filled with game reviews, predictions, recruiting news, complete scouting reports, and much more, all from an Aggie perspective. Call 1-800-592-1222 to get the Aggie sports news direct from College Station. Call now and we'll enter you in a drawing for a trip for two to the Texas A&M versus Texas game. Call now. Exxon Southwest Conference Supreme Team. Be sure and cast your vote at Exxon beginning September 24th. By Southwest Airlines. By Nations Bank. By La Quinta Motor Inns. your Texas Dodge dealers and by Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Rosette New Jenkins returns Terry Venetulius' kick out to the 15-yard line. This is a score that is going to send chills through the eight remaining teams on Texas A&M schedule because the Aggies are back. If you hope that they would crumble mentally and follow in the footsteps of their 44-14 loss last week at Oklahoma, here's their answer for you. 73 nothing. The biggest upset is that this is only the sixth biggest winning margin in school history. Can you believe that? They've won five more games by a bigger margin than 73 nothing. With Murray rambles for about 15. And we're down near the three-minute mark. The Aggies' upcoming schedule, they take next week off, then they go to Lubbock for what is always a tough That'll matchup. That'll be a battle for them right there. At Tech, that's the team they've just barely beat at the gun by two here in College Station last year. Houston, then at Baylor, at Rice, both could be very tough trips. Back here against SMU on the 30th. Biggest win in school history, 110 zip. Randall Baker in 1920. Dallas U, 98-0, 1917. They won three games by 77 nothing. Oh, Hyder Boyd for about 10. And this is the highest point total since 1986 when they beat TCU 74 to 10. Quite a legacy. Take a look at that. 110 to nothing back in 1920, and we don't know where the guy is. 
Nor have, has Sam Houston made a, a return on the gridiron in many a year. Missouri Mines, the renowned football factory, shut down in 1916. Biggest shutout win in uh, many, many years. And 73 to nothing with two minutes and 48 seconds remaining at a measurement. Georgia has defeated Texas Tech by 15, 52-37. Notre Dame in a walk over Michigan State. Florida now 14-0 over Tennessee. And your Texas Dodge Dealers player of the game, Corey Pulley, he had so much pressure on him to live up to his billing. He followed through with a 6-for-6 six six start, a 15-for-22 day, 186, and two touchdowns. And he really established himself today. I really feel that uh, this was a big game personally for him as far as confidence was concerned. Of course, hitting Harrison in the end zone there. I was really impressed with all of the stuff that he was hearing from everywhere, from friends, from family, from coaching staff, from teammates, from uh, his girlfriend, students, from his girlfriend, from everywhere. And he just played within himself and All he side. had a lot of fun. Dead ball. And All you know what? We could defense. have given this First award day. to about, uh, I, I guess we could maybe have given it to, what, 22 different players because it was that kind of a performance for the Aggies. But you have to give it to Corey Pollock because he kind of represented what this team was all about today. A tenacious effort on his part. People may look at, around the country and say, well, they, they got stung, they wanted to impress the pollsters, and they ran up the stairs. And that's not true. Time to board. That is certainly not the case. Certainly not the case. Let's touch on these uh, suspensions one more time. Because the Aggies went to the NCAA and they recommended four game suspensions for most of the players. Um, but Greg Hill, with the exception, because, um, because of sitting out the bowl game, they were asking for a two game suspension and also for Brooks, a two-game suspension this year. Well, the NCAA came back and they ruled on these. They're going to get, uh, they're going to get Hill back, what, for, against the University of Houston? Ray Hill returns, that's right. He sits one more out, and that will be the Tech game. Boy, on another carry. But, also interesting to point out, as Slocum says, when Hill returns, Rodney Thomas is still the starter. And it's his job to lose, and Greg Hill will be behind Thomas. It was the other way last year and the year before. The executive producer of Raycom Sports is Peter Rolfe, senior coordinating producer and director of today's game, Johnny Tyus. Southwest Conference football produced by coordinating producer David W. Handler. Our technical director, Brad Sheldon. Our associate director, Lee Friday. Brandon Corso scrambling with 45 seconds to go in the game. Finds Boyd for the first down at the a and 44. And everyone else who has helped bring us and you Southwest Conference football today. And thanks as well to our statistician Kirk McCarley, our squatter Doug Smith. We are the busiest man up here. Word, by the way, from Missouri, Mark Pedrotti, x-rayed here at A&M, did fracture his right leg. And he may think again before coming to Texas. Two years ago at Baylor, he stepped off a curb, boarding the team bus to go to the game, sprained his ankle, missed the game. Breaks his leg today. Too bad for a great player. We hope he comes back. Missouri timeout with 23 seconds. Kind of interesting. Brandon Corso called a timeout. His right arm is just kind of hanging there, and I don't know if he could have run that play, and that's the reason I think he called timeout. He went to the sidelines, and I think he told Bob Stoll, he said, I... He really got popped on the last play and, and said, I don't know if I can throw it. And as he came to the line of scrimmage, it was kind of interesting because he was just holding his right arm. He put his left arm down like underneath the center, but his right arm was not there. Consequently, he said, I want a timeout. One more time, let's go back. Here he is, and he's gonna get popped right here by number 23, Keith Mitchell. What's this? It's nailed. And he goes down, and I think at that point, he completed the pass at that point. 
Well, he got hit on the left side, but uh, it was the right shoulder that hurt. And the quarterback is Brian Salee, who has some experience throwing the ball for Missouri, even as a wideout. We didn't see him do it today, but they like to throw hits lateral to him and let him throw it. Eight for 11 last year for 121 yards for Salee. And he'll run what might be the last play of the day. The give is to Tiger Boyd. Giff, it's been fun. You've worked hard for your uh, enjoyment this half, but it's been a treat. It's always enjoyable to work with you, Dave, and all the great people down in the truck, all the people shooting the pictures. Excellent job by everyone. It's always fun. And it is finally over. No more questions, at least for another two weeks, about the Texas a and Aggies. And we'll be back in College Station in a moment. It is second down, 12 after a loss of two. Thomas again. Not much of a hole, and Coates is right there to wrestle him to the ground right at the original line of scrimmage. Maybe he gained a yard out to the 21. Defensive coordinator Tom Hayes, what he's doing right now with his guys up front, he's saying, everybody, you got to play one-on-one -on -one football. you got to handle the man in front of you. Don't get moved and stick, get off your blocks and run to the football. That's one thing he did so well as my coach at UCLA. And, uh, you know, it's showing right here. Now, AM in another third and long situation, third and nine. They are two of seven on third down conversion. Billy has time, flips it underneath and completes it to Thomas, but he goes nowhere. Tyrell Peter. A freshman from right here in Norman with a big tackle on Thomas. A&M will have to give it away on their first possession. James Bennett on to punt. Darius Johnson back to receive. Bennett did a real good job punting into the wind in the first half. He gets a good roll here. Johnson has it from the 31 up to about the 36. And that's it. Daryl Red, the snapper, the first one down there along with Reggie Graham. A 45-yard punt. CFA College Football here on ABC Sports is being brought to you today by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Owen Field and Memorial Stadium here in Norman, Oklahoma. And the Sea of Red, pretty happy so far with the Sooners leading at 13 to nothing. Uh, hey, they got the ball right now. It's all about using more of that clock, I believe. Chandler in at fullback, James Allen at tailback, Oklahoma first and ten. Allen. AM right there as he gains maybe only a yard. Sam Adams, number 95, leading the play. Oklahoma did a pretty good job in the first half. Only two punts. Of course, they had the turnover with the fumble and the block field goal. You know, of course, turnovers is a key factor. That's one. That that's very good. If they can. <laughs> Have a second half like this, it's going to make it very tough on the Aggies. Jawan Penny, 89, in at wide receiver, along with Corey Warren. Going to be lots of time in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Ricky Brady, the tight end. Larry Jackson had the coverage, and Dean Blevins has something for us. Guys, defensively, the Aggies are missing two outstanding performers. We mentioned in the first half, Ray Mickens had an injury, and he is out with a concussion, will not play. Linebacker Solari will not play as well, so two key players will not play in the second half. Boy, those are two key guys, that's for sure. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, that's going to loom real big now for the Aggies. Like I said, is Bob Dave going to have to do some things now defensively a little bit different to make up for some of the lack of experience he has back there? Well, the a and defense has Oklahoma right now, third and long. Gundy. Corey Warren tipped away at the last second by Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn, having a fine game, makes a big play here, and the Sooners will have to give it up. Last year's Southwest Conference, a newcomer of the year, 
perfect technique. He's over his feet. He drives. This is the difference right here. Look at the drive he gets. Now he's going to bat the football. Dangerous, but if you got the speed and the closing ability to get to the football, make the play. Pro scouts love this. And Aaron Glenn is back to receive the punt. Blanton on the kick with the wind at his back. High, relatively short kick. And takes a great OU bounce. Aaron Glenn could do nothing about it as it was well away from him. It goes out at the 14 of AM. What a job in the kicking game by Scott Blanton. A 48-yard punt. We'll be back. Me and my nephew had this rivalry about our trucks. He was trying to pull out a car that had been buried in a snowbank. I said, well, when you guys stop fooling around, I'll yank you out with my Chevy. I backed down in there and pulled both him and the Plymouth out at the same time. But that's nothing. Quite often, airplanes go down in the Everglades and we have to go in after them. This truck pulls out just about every plane that we come across. That's my buddy, and I beat its brains out. Chevy, the most dependable lasting trucks on the road. You're looking at Tinia Pettis, commonly known as athlete's foot. But what's not commonly known is many types of fungus cause it. And to cure it all, you've got to kill it all. But today, there's a full prescription strength medicine, the one most recommended by doctors, Lotrimin AF. The broad spectrum power of Lotrimin AF doesn't just get some athlete's foot fungus, it kills it all. Lotrimin AF, the cure that gets it all. This is friction. Metal grinding on metal. Friction can wear your engine down. Friction can shorten its... This is Pennzoil. The friction fighting motor oil that protects more engines than any other motor oil in America. Choose Pennzoil. Use Pennzoil and you'll get quality engine protection in each and every drop. Pennzoil. Performance. Protection. Quality. The Tennessee Volunteers tackle SEC rival Florida. Penn State meets Iowa in a Big Ten battle or other regional action next Saturday on ABC's College Football. Just under 12 minutes to go in the third quarter. Oklahoma leading Texas A&M 13 to nothing and the Aggies again will not enjoy good field position as this time after starting from the 20, their first possession of the half, they start from their own 14. Gross and Thomas in the backfield, and it's Thomas. Rodney running hard, but Audrey Beavers is there along with Mariel Freeman. And what a game 44 Mariel Freeman is having. Not expected to start earlier in the week. And you know, a lot of speculation about his size and his ability to, to run to the football and all that kind of stuff. But you're going to see him here. He's on his keys. He sees that guard coming out to get him. He gets upfield. He gets outside leverage. Takes on the block inside, and he gets there fast enough and doesn't hold up traffic that his, that his pursuit can get there and help him out as well. Good play. Beaver's also in on it. Aubrey Beaver's hard to move on the outside. A senior out of Houston. Second down eight. Play action. Pulling. Firing it. Low and incomplete. Intended for Tony Harrison. Coverage by Darius Johnson. Oh, he's got to make that play right there. That's an, an out, plenty of time. You're going to see how open he is here. It's a three deep drop. Darius giving him some room. In fact, getting turned around, and the ball's not there. It's third down and seven. Bullock has not had a good day throwing the football. And because of the control of the ball by Oklahoma, A&M's been forced to throw more than they would have liked. Yeah, and they got to him early, too. He gets it away. Intercepted. Mario Freeman at the 12. Big Russell Allen, number 95, was in the face of Corey Pullock. And Mario Freeman comes up with yet another big play. There's nothing like pressure. He's trying to get the Harrison across the field. It's a zone coverage. Freeman just going to his drop. The receiver falls down. There it is right there. Freeman in perfect position. Now he's off to the races. It's all about the pressure on the quarterback. When you can get the pressure on this man right here, make him dance around. 
That time it wasn't his fault though, because he was thrown in the right position. But the receiver goes down, Oklahoma makes a great play. Now the Sooners have another opportunity. Allen trying to get outside, he cannot. Good pursuit by Antonio Shorten. Junior linebacker out of Houston who's also had a pretty good day. And Allen gets it down inside the 10, inside the 9. That is the third A&M turnover. Two interceptions. 11 minutes exactly remaining in the third quarter. Allen gained three, so it'll be second and seven. Yesterday in the meeting, Gibbs talked a lot about turnovers. He said they had had too many in the past, and they need to go out here, especially this game, and limit those turnovers, hold on to the football, keep A&M's offense off the field. Pressure all over him, led by Eric England, number 92. The first guy in there. Gundy couldn't find anybody open, even though he rolled away from the initial pressure. Excellent coverage here. You might want to call this a coverage sack, triple formation. They're just back in a, in a three deep zone. Gundy's got no place to throw. And now here comes the heat. Sometimes it's smart to take that sack. That's a good experience move by Gundy. Don't throw it away. Don't throw the interception. That's the fourth sack by the A&M defense. Gundy has lost a total of 27 yards on those four sacks. Now the ball is at the 15 where it is third down and 14 yards to go. And somebody jumped where they drawn and it was Sam Adams who blasted in there. But whether he was premature or whether he was drawn off sides, we will find out from John Lurie, the referee. Dead ball, Dead ball. encroachment defense, five yard penalty. Apparently Sam did it all on his own. Uh, you know, that's a that's another mental error they call. All you gotta do is watch the football, but when you get on a certain count all the time, and that's a credit to Gundy, bury that snap count. Draw those guys off sides. That moves the ball down to the 10, where it's third and nine. Throws it back over the middle. What a catch by Allen. Touchdown. Well, now they've really made things tough on the Aggies. Just a triple formation there. You're going to see Allen come underneath, sneak underneath the coverage. Basically, they had a man-to-man -man zone combination. He comes underneath everybody, looked like they got somebody picked, looked like it was a mix-up in the secondary, and what an outstanding catch. What a day for James Allen, the freshman from Winniewood, Oklahoma. Keith Mitchell was right in the face of Gundy, but Gundy got it away. Scott Blanton adds the extra point. And the Sooners surprising A&M, welcoming them to Norman with a 20 to nothing lead in the third. are fired up and so are about 75,000 fans here in Norman as they now lead A&M 20 to nothing. Blanton will kick off. Michael McMullen and Leland McElroy who are back haven't had much to do because Blanton hasn't given them any to return. This one will be caught but about nine yards deep by McElroy. Yet another touchback. We want to remind you that at the conclusion of today's game, we will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school in the name of those respective players. And now, Steve, here's the problem. The Oklahoma crowd is starting to get into this football game. That's one thing RC didn't want. And they have got to get out of the play-action mode here, maybe get a third receiver on the field and start moving, moving this thing up the field. And him starting from their own 20. Rodney Thomas has a hole and picks up five or six on first down. Russell Allen, 95 on the stop. And that's one of the best first down gains they've had. Yeah, but the only problem is it's a run. 
you, know, you got 926 and ticking. And I'm not saying they can't run the ball up and down the field like this and score a lot of points fast, but pretty soon they're going to have to get into some kind of throwing. And I, and I, and I give them credit. You know, they're, they're doing a good job of not panicking. See, it's not a panic kind of